Our second scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Mark 1, verses 4 through 11. Listen for the word of God. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Those words from Genesis are words that call us and remind us that God works through God's Word and the Holy Spirit. Those very first words of in the beginning of how things all started when God began began to create a wind, a breath, a Spirit of God swept over the chaos, the watery, dark, and formless void. And then God spoke. Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that it was good. The litany continues on from there and continues to tell us the story and point us towards God's creativity in this world of of creating something good out of chaos. A litany that worshipfully lifts up the power of God in our midst. It is true, though, any time the word of God is proclaimed and the Spirit moves, something good happens. Today, the lectionary encourages us to read uh, one of the stories of when, uh, from one of the Gospels of when Jesus was baptized. This is year B, so we uh, read from the Gospel of Mark today. This is the Sunday after we have celebrated Epiphany. We have spent weeks talking about how God came to us in flesh and blood throughout Advent and Christmas, uh, telling the stories with shepherds, wise men, uh, with uh, stars, talking about Jesus, the baby. But before we turn our attention to the grown-up Jesus, we stop at this story, we stop by the River Jordan to hear what God spoke and what God did through the power of the Holy Spirit. It was a special day. It was a baptism. All baptisms are special days, aren't they? It was a day when in the life of a Christian and in the life of the church where we see and we feel and we hear God's word proclaim and we know the presence of the Holy Spirit with us. When Jesus was born, it was a day when God spoke and the Holy Spirit moved and something good happened. Something must have happened that day for Jesus. I mean, the heavens ripped open. 
a voice comes down, the presence of the Holy Spirit seems as something that is real to be seen and touched like a dove. Something must have happened that day for Jesus. The way Mark tells it, the way the story was passed on to the one who wrote the Gospel of Mark, the way the story that he recorded it to pass on to us, it's very personal what happened that day. For it was Jesus who saw the heavens open up. It was Jesus who heard the voice and saw the dove and heard the proclamation. I mean, seeing heaven ripped open, that must have been something. Hearing the voice of God and seeing that dove come down, the very presence of Holy Spirit, must have been amazing, life-changing. To hear the voice of God claim him and proclaim who he was wonder what was on his heart and his mind. Scripture actually, the Gospel of Mark doesn't tell us what Jesus was thinking and feeling at that moment. But it must have been special to hear a voice like the voice of a parent that claims us and says how much they love us the voice of a parent that says, I'm pleased with you. It must have been a special day for Jesus. But it was not a day just for him. Otherwise, there would there'd be no reason for Mark to record this and pass it on to us. We don't know exactly what that moment meant for Jesus, but Scripture does tell us that that God spoke and pointed us right to Christ and told us who Christ is. This is the Savior of the world and everything that goes on from here on in the Gospel of Mark is telling us more and more about the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, God proclaimed, the Spirit moved, and the barrier between us and God is torn open and apart. The barriers that we have put up, God approaches us in Christ for a new relationship with us. So we have the word of God proclaimed. We have the speaking. Although the story, uh, the way that the story is recorded in the, in the gospel of Mark, the emphasis on what Jesus saw and what Jesus heard on that moment of that special day, God's word through the power and the work of the Holy Spirit is for everyone and all of us today. We hear God proclaim who Jesus is And we continue the reading. We continue the studying. What more does the the word of God have to say to us? As Presbyterians, our tradition emphasizes the fact that any time the word of God is rightly proclaimed and the sacraments are rightly administered is where the church is. The body of Christ can be found there. When we proclaim and hear God's word, something happens. Something happens to us as individuals and as a community of faith. But it's more than just the words, though, isn't it? I mean, I talk all the time up here. I give you lots of words. There is no power in words, just as there is no power in the water. The power is the movement of the Holy Spirit working with what God speaks.
speaks God's word to transform us in our lives. So, we have discipleship hour for the kids down the hall to hear the stories and the teachings of Jesus. We have children's church where the kids can hear the proclamation of the word of God in a way that they can hear it while we stay in here and hear more words. We have discipleship hour for adults, the faith in life class, uh, the coffee talk class, so that we can hear the word of God proclaimed and studied. The youth, our youth have discipleship hour every Sunday, but not only that, they get together Sunday evening, most Sunday evenings, to study the word of God and to hear the word of God proclaimed as it comes to us through the Bible, but there's more to it, isn't there? When we hear the Word of God and share how it speaks to us and share how it brings a burning in our heart or comfort in a time of hurting and longing or maybe helps calm the chaos in our lives and fills the void, that emptiness that is longing and yearning for God's love and forgiveness. Yeah, that's more than words, isn't it? That is when God speaks and the Holy Spirit moves and something good happens. That is where church is found. So, listen for the word of God. Proclaim the word of God. And as the church trusts in that Holy Spirit to bring us together to be the church in study and in work. Because that's where the church is found. Let us go to God in prayer.